Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We're also on TammyPepperman.org, so you're listening to no borders radio dot, no border, or no borders radio dot co dot uk. We are listener and reader supported. And if you'd like to donate, please visit us at our respective sites, www.freedomslips.com. Click on our support pages, TammyPepperman.org. You can find the support pages for Tamworth Web Development as well. Visit their site. We've got a very beautiful uh, web development project. So, www.tamworthwebdevelopment.co.uk Of course, you can visit our chats, many other things. Rick Perry! Screaming about ISIS possibly coming over that border. That border there. Number one. Psychological warfare. There's no border. You've been educated, indoctrinated to be pit against yourselves and each other by general counsel, corporate counsel, and attorneys who cash in on all of that. Of course, Rick Perry is traded as the general counsel located in Texas. And the military, of course, the military of the federal state is the FBI. Perry says, ISIS might cross the border. ISIS has been here for a very long time. Been in Washington, D.C., hiding out. ISIS is a corporation located at 918 F Street Northwest, Suite 608, Washington, D.C., 20004. Israeli Prime Minister says Hamas, just like ISIS, absolutely. Hamas is found as Hamish Hay, 4115 Legislation Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20015. So the FBI, guns down your loved one, Ferguson, Missouri. And then it screams, you did it. It screams, oh, we need some more law enforcement here because the citizens are in unrest and being disorderly, protesting all over the place, and we just don't know why they would be so upset that one of their offspring was offed by the FBI. We're going to bring in some armed guards to ensure the corporation's well-being and safety. Forty more FBI agents and a slew of National Guard. And as this war zone manifested itself, we learned many things. These priests of Baal are usually located in gang memberships, philanthropy, and AACP members cashing in on racism. Let us go back and visit what happened in Ferguson, Missouri. An FBI agent kills a black 18-year-old teen, unarmed, Of 
Corporate Council calls in its security forces, more FBI agents, and the National Guard. And they point their finger at you and say, you're racist. Henry Reed comes in and evidences himself as racist. Henry Reed, of course, or Harry Reed, of course, is a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. We gotta promote that racism. We got to. We have to show the sheeple that there's some possibility that they're racist. And Congress is not, and that this is not part of a depopulation program stemming from the 1947 National Security Act. Let's go back a little bit further. There's two little tricky pieces of uh, congressional action in 1924, the first of which, of course, is the League of Nations Covenant when it formulated the first United Nations. Same confederacy, I mean, let's just not call it anything, but as League is a synonym for confederacy. And then, in 1924, Virginia passes legislation called the Racial Integrity Act. It says, we're not going to allow any interbreeding, crossbreeding, and we're going to provide for the sterilization of anyone who's off-color, slightly off-color, or mentally infirm. Let's scoop forward to 1974, Henry Kissinger comes in and says, well, depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. 1975, the Office of Population Affairs was established, which of course is the Department of Health and Human Services. If you go to Dun and Bradstreet right now, search that one out in Texas, you'll find that Rick Perry is traded as the depopulation program of the Department of Health and Human Services. Well, why is this centralizing Rick Perry in a location known as Texas? It's a trafficking hub. It's along a waterway. It has access to in-ground or inland trading, air trading through the Port Authority. And we've got treaties. We've got lots of treaties, these agreements between two banks by which to traffic human beings and hide those assets. Lawful money is defined as gold and silver. One ounce increments. Par value equals one dollar each. However, 1917 comes along and we need to get ourselves a new way of trafficking humans. We need to find a new way of grossing revenue and income and derivatives. We're going to call it a debt note. And we're going to put in place the debenture participation program and allow, lovingly, allow the human beings to be slaves to their masters. And we're going to get them to uh, spend these things. We're going to get them to use these things without realizing those are dollar bills. Those are bills. Each time one passes their hands, they're bills. They're debts in themselves. So we're going to get them to cash their checks from employment, for example. And that sheep will go into the bank, and it'll give a check to the teller or the exchange window. 
And that exchange window is going to ask, how do you want that? Well, sheeple don't know that they could uh, trade in their check for lawful money or bills. How do you want that? So all these sheeple have been cashing their checks from employment and saying, well, I'll take those in large bills. Large bills. I want large bills. Please wrap that millstone around my neck. Give me bills. I don't want lawful money. I want bills. Give me bills. Because that's what I work for. I'm a slave. I am a fee in a fiefdom. Corporate council laps all the way to the bank. As you're exchanging those bills on the other end of that, somebody's getting the gold, aren't they? And all this time, this uh, corporation has been cashing in left and right, killing human beings, discharging congressional bankruptcy. Hiding assets offshore through the IRS, of course, because with the introduction of bills, debt notes, gold can go one way, and Federal Reserve notes can go another way. And this is explained also in Matthew 27. Judas was given some debt notes to roll on Jesus. And when he realized what he had done, he attempted to hand those back to the chief priests and elders. And they said, no, we cannot put that back in the treasury. That has to go elsewhere. Puerto Rico sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, sure. Money laundering. We'll call it the IRS and pretend it's lawful. That's a great idea, Rick Perry. That's a great idea. Rick Perry, Governor Bob McDonald, Andrew Cuomo, Scott Walker. Scott Walker has been surrounding himself with security forces in recent months. He's been under fire for spending so much money protecting himself over his constituents. Which is ironic. Wisconsin, of course, having been found guilty of human trafficking, child sex trafficking, female trafficking, genocide. It's interesting what happens after such a thing occurs. And this governor's pilot there surrounds himself with security instead of the priests, whilst continuously washing his hands in holy water. Holy water. Yeah, it happens. Rick Perry's up there telling you he's going to protect you. He loves you. He loves you. He's a Christian man. He's going off on Obama. He loves you. He's filled with God. You know that. Filled with God. Human trafficking, just like God would do. Right? Or are we talking about the Lord God, Beelzebub, Barabbas, Judas, all these others with law? Literally, the etymology on law means to lay down. To lay down. It's interesting, that uh, phrase, to lay down. As Jesus is defined in the Bible as being resurrected at some point, which means to stand again. Not reincarnate, mean, meaning to be meat again, or to be uh, living again, or come back. Jesus said the same thing in Matthew 18. He said the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost, which indicates that is a very, very, very subjective relative, real-time walk of somebody. Of course, we go back to Shakespeare. He says the same thing, and as you like it, all the world is a stage. You can pick up whatever hat you want to. You can be whatever you want to. 
And of course, Jesus said that in 1 Corinthians 7. He says, be as you are. You already are. So you're going to take up all these hats, and you're going to put on these things, and you're going to be whatever. And of course, Perry is evidencing himself as peaceable. The Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. And those that adhere to him and follow him are considered to be espousing the doctrine of the Pharisee. Jesus speaks of that as well. Eleven. Eleven of the Pharisee. Don't do that. You don't want man's law. You don't want to lay down. You want to be resurrect. Able to stand again. Well, what is pushing you down? What is depressing you? First of all, uh, you have a government that you've been patronizing that's killing your kids. And then pointing the finger at you. The same way they did in Exodus, which that word means, exo means outside of or away from, and deus means God. In Exodus, of course, this judge character comes down from a hill and he tells you, you all are stealing each other's wives and asses, and I'm here to protect you, and right away, following that was Leviticus, the action of taxation. That same judge and Cobra Council now, sitting in Ferguson after murdering one of my children, 18-year-old Michael Brown, and pointing out at the citizens and saying, you all are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses. What are we going to do about this? Wait a second. The evidence says that uh, you just mur murdered child in the action of genocide and adherence to the 1924 Racial Integrity Act, the 1947 National Security Act, which is it also adhering to national security contrary to state security as defined by 18 U.S.C. subsection 794. Now, what are we going to do about this? We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to uh, smooth tongue it. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to blame any citizens for your works and actions. We're not going to blame any uh, hidden banksters. I'm seeing that come out again today. What, what about the banksters? Well, wait a second. A banker defined is an attorney. As a court defined in Black's Law Dictionary is a bank. Or a bank defined in Black's Law Dictionary is a court. And these attorneys are banking human beings, trafficking them via court process. And yes, that seems far removed from Michael Brown, but who cashes in on these insurance claims? The hedge funds, the insurance, the generation of revenue created when people buy into the concept of racism. And when they call in the NAACP and everybody floods them with donations to help provide a, a remedy for all of this racism. Wait a second, citizens were not racist. The FBI gunned down a boy. Corporate counsel cashed in on that. We're not going to change the subject, Rick Perry. We're not going to change the subject, Holder, Holder. Obama, Biden, ISIS. Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, John Cornyn, Johnny Holdren. John Holdren is a science star in this administration, and uh, I suggest everybody take a really good look at what it is. He wrote a very profound uh, piece called Echo Science, promoting genocide promoting forced sterilization, promoting forced depopulation, promoting specialization of the female in order to get this done, promoting corporate welfare, promoting national security. Of course they did the same thing in what is known as Population Matters, which is a compendium to the population bomb. Environmentalism is always, always, always used at the end of a civilization or society, just before they off it, 
by which to redistribute corporate assets. You can find this following the Athenian constitution into the agrarian laws. Agrarian laws are always environmentalism. Just a different spin on it. So now what? Where do we go from here? What happens to humanity when all of the attorneys are rounded up and put elsewhere? What happens when the FBI is removed from the ability to harm humanity and put elsewhere? What happens when there aren't any lawmakers to make all of these laws that allow and enable human trafficking and genocide. In the Bible, that was defined as heaven. That was also defined as your garden. It was usurped by the same snake, same snake, selling you concepts from that tree of knowledge. Well, what happens when you eat of that tree or partake of the concepts sold to you from the tree of knowledge? It's written that you start experiencing death. Well, death doesn't hurt normally. Yes, it does if it's civil death. If it's civil death, you get to be as Job and experience Job's ordeal because corporate counsel and the other agents burn his house down, kill his wife, take his kids through CPS. And he claws his way back out of there and he pays his child support and he pays his alimony and he pays his taxes and ultimately he builds up his business again and wham! Corporate counsel nails him for back taxes, for false allegations of child abuse, or allows him to be in one car accident through thanks to the help of the FBI. And of course, Joe, he never sees what's actually going on, so he runs off to the priest and he says, Oh my gosh, I think God has it in for me. I, I trust this guy, but something's wrong here. I must have done something to deserve this. No, you're indoctrinated to believe that God has a hand in any of these horrifying things. And what you see on the ground, these priests and rabbis, oh, they're vicious, vicious. Those are the chief priests. Those are the chief priests. How do they feed you to a corporation? Well, they teach you that you're a bad boy and a bad girl. You're a sinner, by golly. You're a sinner, and you must earn your way out of hell. All of these things that corporate counsel is doing to you. Why? You must have done something wrong. You're sad. And, and things come in threes. Everything comes in threes. Oh my god, I'm going through hell. Everything comes in threes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a business model. Men of some of it. Morality, psychology, and ethics. Taxation is a moral issue. Being called a bad dad is a psychological issue. And of course, being criminalized is an ethical issue. In Ferguson, Missouri, which has a majority black populace, media is reporting that every single citizen in Ferguson, Missouri has received three warrants. And all of our listeners now, you know, they're 
thinking about maybe in the past getting a ticket or whatever. H how many times have you been attacked by Congress? IRS audits? IRS bills? CPS reviews? CPS involvement? Anonymous callers. I, I love that one. An anonymous caller hotline on you, and we're just here to check on your kids, and, you know, we want to know if they're safe. Well, where, where's that anonymous caller? Well, we can't release that information. Well, Walter Burian found upwards of 800,000 federal employees without names and titles, and just paychecks. 800,000 informants. Later on, we found that those are broker accounts, and usually they're paid out through municipal disabilities. So they're cashing in like hand over fist because you've got diagnoses over on this side of mental health, whatever. You've got their kids in the shoot. You've got great informants because you can hold anything over their heads. And on the other side, you've got another victim that was just delivered up to pilot. Great, great business schematic. Very efficient. Much, much more efficient than when the corporation was called Rome. Much, much quieter when than when the corporation was called Nazi Germany. Because here, in this westernized culture set, 42 females can be murdered each and every day by prescription drug overdose, and nobody takes notice. That is chemical warfare, and that is the same thing as putting somebody into the gas chambers. Forty-two females each and every day are dying of prescription drug overdoses. That is the equivalent of a gas chamber. Forty-two females a day. A day! end of the year you've got a small city of missing human beings that have gone elsewhere that are no longer amongst us thanks to corporate counsel general counsel congress and such as the 1924 racial integrity act and the eugenics program that such as margaret sanger was espousing these agents for years for years these agents have come upon me you don't know what you're talking about this is not Nazi Germany you just witnessed it with your own eyes an 18 year old child was just gone down by the FBI and they brought in their security forces which are Stasi agents and tried to tell you that it was you it was you the Jews or you the Mexicans or you the Cambodians or you the Iraqis or, or you the Pakistanis or you the the Islamic State or you the, the state of Gaza they just now did it in front of your eyes perpetrating as Nazi Germany and then what? And then what? Are, are you going to go out and vote for it? Because, you know, that's just sick. It's twisted. Are you going to rush out right now and get a driver's license from it? Are you going to pay it taxes so that it continue the on can continue the onslaught? I need to know because, you know, I've, I've thought about the lemmings for forever. You know, the lemmings that follow the Pied Piper, they all rushed off the cliff. And, you, and if you can imagine in your mind, all of the lemmings in the back, you know, they're rushing towards the front. And they're pushing innocent lemmings off that cliff. I am not going to be pushed off of a cliff by any lemmings. So if you want to be a lemming and you want to patronize this thing, uh, it, you know, you're...
you're you're on your own. You're absolutely on your own. And when it forsakes you, that's your own. It's not mine. We're getting down to the wire here, and these agents are whining excessively, which is so irritating. So irritating. And it's written in Revelation. very interesting to walk through these these things and um, Revelation 19 17 and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the foul supply in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both great small and great and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of burning, a fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. These are interesting days because at one point the attorneys had come in with the Article 1, Section 9. Clause 1 of their constitution that maintained that uh, human beings were not only could be imported, but could be migrated as birds. As birds. And when you look and follow that train of thought through, you find that they were defining human beings as terms. A bird, it doesn't. It isn't defined by having wings or the ability to fly. It's defined by having a sternum. So family sterni. It's very interesting to witness these things and evidence how freakishly disgusting such as Rick Perry and his cronies are. And, uh, See them carrying on. Today on RT, RT.com is placing history. Berlin loses track of huge 3.5 ton Lenin head. What the heck? Is this a, a prank or a frat prank? Three and a half ton head. Piece of history lost, buried, or possibly stolen. German officials admitted they cannot locate Berlin's famous statue of Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin. Some claim the inability to find the monument is politicized, others boast having a quote treasure map. Well, it can go either way. It was Hitler who burned down the rice tag and pointed the finger elsewhere. News of the missing culture artifact came to light after the top of the statue, a 3.5 ton granite replica of the Russian revolutionary's head, was requested for an art exhibition featuring monuments from Germany's Nazi and communist eras. How does a country lose a 19 meter high statue that stood in Berlin for just over two decades? In this case, it cut it up into 129 pieces, buried them in Kopenick Forest on the outskirts of the city, and left them there exposed to vandals and thieves. The head, requested by the art exhibition, scheduled for next spring, was over five feet tall and one of the few pieces left intact. The sculpture, the sculpture became famous through movies like Goodbye, Lenin, in which the head of the statue is symbolically suspended by helicopter. It's interesting to see that they would disrupt something of a cultural institution. Everybody.
everybody's gotten used to this and you know we see the same things over and over again the, the most ironic I think was the alleged assassination of Abraham Lincoln Abraham Lincoln was very 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 profitable for Congress Abraham Lincoln was said to be one of the most prolific followers of, of course, the doctrine of necessity, defined as um, whatever is not lawful shall be made so by necessity. Very, very efficient for business. But, what if you have a very, very simple communication system, you don't have internet or phone technology and you have a populace spread from one end of a country to another that do not have the political indoctrination it takes to get away with politics. Well you put on a really good show. You kill such as a president and then you spread the word president's been killed, the president's been killed. And the majority of the populace at that time would have said what? What's a president? And of course the FBI on the ground, at whatever it was called at that time, would have said, well, president is this, and it lives in the White House, and it loves you. You know, you want to pay homage, oh my god, he's dead. And everybody goes into chaos. Again, after their experience with the new Moses, the new guy coming down from the hill, telling everybody, you're all stealing each other's wives and asses, killing each other, here's ten commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. I shall not commit adultery. Nobody was doing that prior to the time that the attorney showed up and started killing our kids, stealing our wives and asses. And if you want real time examples, it started in Bangladesh in the 1980s. Bangladesh was untouched just prior to that, of course, and the beautiful studies coming out of there, which is so profound to see you know, a semi-natural environment and watch as those studies turn towards PC socialized, westernized Bangladesh When just before the attorney showed up, they didn't have any of those issues. Wives were not running off with FBI agents. Husbands were not running off with FBI agents. Nobody found fault with their husbands and wives. There was no attorney interceding or interpleading into the estates. There was no child abuse. There is no such thing as alimony, there is no such thing as marriage or divorce in the majority of these places. Now that's one of the most profound things about the Islamic religion. If you take away all the facade, their marriages are marriages of intent. Nature reality. Do you love me? Do I love you? Okay. And then of course when the attorney shows up it's a third party contract and we can buy a license from the attorney to get married which means he's got a free pass to our states. Free pass to raise that estate. That's what it's all about. Agamemnon. Agamemnon. Roaming the globe with his army of FBI agents. Mm. 
Of course. Achilles is fighting Agamemnon with a very sore heel called Eve. That female agent that is so lovingly created by social engineering. Offered so many things in your garden. Welfare benefits, subsidized housing, free schooling, free medical, broker accounts, perks and benefits to roll on Achilles. The story of Adam and Eve is repeated throughout history. Homer was quite a profound uh, literary. Homeric hymns, of course, is where everything stems from, including the biblical texts, the Quran, Torah. It too says what happened. It says it's a psychological experiment. Great Red Ra, over and over and over again, speech making. Thomas Hobbes says the same thing. In Leviathan, he says it's this huge cartoon. How to formulate these concepts in your head. Huge psychological experiment. When you go back to the Homeric hymns and it talks about Greece, these newly created concepts and constructs, and go forward, slide them out, and whoa, I'll be darned. Eight volumes of a history of Greece written by none other than attorneys, interpreted from the Iliad and the Odyssey. Again, repeating these myths to you in your mind. This is how it is, this is how it was. No, 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 no. Same construct, 1648, Treaty of Westphalia. Congress came in and formulated Rome again, restructured under its bankruptcy. Then what? Hold them accountable. This is psychological warfare. It's not hard to get out from underneath this thing. Once you know what it is, you just get it out of your neighborhoods. Do you want something that's gunning down your children in your neighborhood? Yes or no? If the answer is no, get it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Don't ask it, please, sir, may I have another? Please, just... Uh, I don't believe my eyes, so here's the deal. The next thousand times you kill a human being, we'll let attorneys investigate this along with their FBI agents to ensure that you're really killing human beings. Right? I mean, that's what you've done up till now. Kendrick Johnson, we were, there was a story that came out again today about the um, harvesting in, going on in Israel. Organ harvesting. And the trafficking trade through Costa Rica. And the story goes on that it costed a lot of money to have somebody harvested, but other than that, it was a pretty easy thing to do. Absolutely. It's more efficient in the United States Incorporated. In Georgia, the FBI is grabbing kids out of the public school system, Kendrick Johnson, killing them, harvesting their organs, and then... The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is pointing the fingers elsewhere. 
Kendra Johnson was also a black child. And they nailed him in a school setting. A public school. They rolled him up into a mat. Killed him. How disgusting is that? How much more do you need to see before you remove these predators from amongst you? Thomas Herbs. Todd Johnson left him hanging in his dad's garage on Father's Day, 2009. He had already been killed before that. But if it looks like a suicide, it has a greater effect on the subject involved. Otto Zem was accidentally tased and killed to death. Medical examiner determined that one to be a homicide. No officers were ever charged. Chicago, a couple of years ago, a pregnant woman was tased after she called the police during a fender bender accident. That, of course, was an intentional use of the taser to spontaneously abort the child, which thankfully did not happen. How much more do you need to see? How much more evidence do you need to see before you remove this predator from amongst you and hold Barabbas, the murderer, accountable, rather than constantly allowing Jesus to hang on that cross and have that millstone around the, his neck through the Devonshire Participation Program. If you want to read more about that, you can go to small, um, the sba.gov, smallbusinessadministration.gov, use the word, uh, keyword QSIP, C-U-I-S, C-U-S-I-P, sorry. You can read about the Devonshire Participation Program. Devonshire means a debt secured by your own earning power. So on a farm, that would be like a horse straddled with a cart forever because a debt is not a loan. This is a debt secured by your own earning power, a debt secured. And that debt, of course, is in reference to Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation where you were pledged and charged to discharge congressional bankruptcy. You're a pledged asset. And Congress said that's great. They're, they'll be pledging you, and they said this in 1933. They came in and says, oh my gosh, we're bankrupt. And then they said, well, we have a fix for that. We're going to come in as the trustees of our own bankruptcy here. And uh, I pick you, 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 you. And he wasn't talking about uh, other Congress members. He wasn't talking about corporations. He was talking about new births, new births, babies. The minute they were born, they got a legal name, a millstone was wrapped around their neck, and they were tossed into the Sea of Commerce. The moment they were born, absolutely contrary to Matthew 18. It says for anyone who has harmed a child it would be better that you have a millstone wrapped around your neck and you be tossed into the sea of commerce. And lo and behold it says this in 46 USC shipping because all of this is, a, is commerce navigation. 
This is just, just business, commerce and navigation. 146 USC 313.25 through 41. It says, excuse me, sir, but if you put a lien on a public vessel, you're volunteering to assume those charges if you ever get caught. What's a public vessel? A public vessel is a human being. A public vessel is one adhering to the public law. Which clearly, clearly, without a doubt, states, no laws of exception shall be passed. There's no such thing as the 14th Amendment, the public law says. And if you write that out, it's evidence of violation of the public law. Because, in the next statement of the public law, it says, uh, Capital punishment is not provided against a citizen. In case you're not aware, FBI, that means don't kill human beings at the behest of corporate counsel to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Because if you do that, you're volunteering to assume that lien. Well, what does that mean? Well, you wrapped a millstone around his neck. Then you killed him. So you're responsible not only for the millstone that's now around your neck, but you're also responsible for his estate and his heirs that are now left without their father or their brother. That means that there's new things that have the millstone. As all of our listeners are aware from the last few years, having found Congress guilty of genocide and uh, entering into the great entry with Northern Holdings, of course, which is a requirement under the 1929 Geneva Convention, all of the prisoners of war are now property of the individual corporations. Dow. Uh, Kraft, Anheuser-Busch, all of those prisoners of war were sitting in the holding corporations as negotiable instruments. So as it goes, you know, he said, look, uh, Northern Holdings, look at this here. here here's the case. These pirates are trying to say that the human beings are uh, lawfully stuffed inside of your holding corporation. And we're we're going to give you some immunity here because we're, we're pretty sure you didn't know about this prior to this time. Just for this day, if you continue to human traffic, you know, that, that, that goes away because now with knowledge and intent and forethought you have and will you're going to human traffic, and that's unlawful on its face. Ironically, 1933, the attorneys came in, and 12 years, 73, they said, well, I'm taking an oath. I am not hypothecated. My client is. You cannot hypothecate me. I'm not a surety. I'm not a natural person. Well, no, you're not. You're a fiction. You're the 14th Amendment person. Specialized by what? Laws of exception. Private acts and acts of commerce. 12 U.S.C. subsection 73 is a private act and act of commerce. Restrictive principle of sovereign immunity says, well, this doesn't apply to private acts and acts of commerce. You don't have any immunity. You don't have any sovereignty. And the public law says the same thing. No laws of exception shall be passed. Well, we haven't even started to talk about the embezzlement out of the treasury. 
as these Converse critters perpetrated that they were adhering to public law. And his vows they were here, adhering to the public law. I put on a whole crap load of presentations since his original charters and inception as a style or chain of events. He was never adhering to the public law. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around. The second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. One, if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Also broadcasting tonight on TammyPeppermann.org, through No Borders Radio, No Borders Radio, <laughs> at No Borders Radio, .co .uk. And if you'd like to donate to TammyPepperman.org or No Borders Radio, please visit us at TammyPepperman.org and click on our support button, which goes to Tamworth Web Development, TamworthWebDevelopment.co.uk. Interesting happenings. We were talking about the recent hype that Perry is espousing. We've also attempted this in Chicago. The WashingtonTimes.com. The headline reads, "Quote: We are in your streets." Chicago gets chilling Islamic State terror tweet. "Quote: Sunni radicals with Islamic State terrorist groups have posted a number of tweets aimed at citizens of Chicago, including a picture of an unidentified man on Michigan Avenue." holding a paper with a handwritten Arabic message, quote, we are in your streets. This is, of course, a recent article, August 22nd, 2014. Let's go back time to March 20th, 2012. Guardian.com. Ex FBI informant with a change of heart, quote, There is no real hunt, it is fixed. Craig Monte describes how he pretended to be a radical Muslim in order to root out potential threats, shining a light on some of the Bureau's most ethically murky practices. Oh, it gets better, folks. Craig Monte says he did not balk when his FBI handlers gave him the okay to have sex with Muslim women and women in his undercover operation was his undercover operation was targeting, nor at the time did he shy away from recording their pillow talk. Quote, they said if I would enhance the intelligence, go ahead and have sex, so I did. Monte told the Guardian as he described his year as a confidential FBI informant sent on a secret mission to infiltrate Southern California mosques. Who is this extremist group in Chicago threatening ISIS? Who is this Rick Perry fellow threatening ISIS is going to come across your border? If he's not there to protect you, you really don't want to put him in jail, do you? I mean, it's just a little human trafficking, and it's a little corruption, and it's a little child sexual abuse, and a little female sex trafficking. They're only humans. They're not the corporations that general counsel is vowed to protect. This 18 year old in Ferguson, Missouri, that was only a human. National Security Act says, yeah, we've got to protect Walmart over Michael Brown. Now think about that for a minute. If you have the choice between Donald Trump losing one of his corporations or killing Michael Brown as a businessman of the United States Incorporated, what 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 do you expect? Well, 
I mean, if if there wasn't guarantee insurance on the ground, all of these hedge funds would go bankrupt. And municipalities would fail, and there would be nobody cashing in on human destruction. What would we do without these murderers in our communities? I shudder at the thought of losing all of the threat upon us and predation. Because, you know, I want my chicken wrapped in plastic and I don't really want to hunt for anything and I don't want to pick my own stuff and I don't want to grow my own plants in my own garden and I don't want to take care of myself. I need Congress to represent me. I need, without a doubt, I need GMO. I need immunizations that will sterilize me and my partner, and I need health care that's going to make me sick, and I need food that will slowly kill me over time so that I can be a better product for Congress. I need to be educated to accept all of these things through public schools, and what's known as Hitler Youth Camps. And I need all of these things as much as I need somebody to come along and break every one of my fingers and every one of my toes. Just for the heck of it. I need somebody dressed up in military uniform hunting my children in my own neighborhood. Because without them, I would probably be bored. Without priests raping my children, I don't know what I'd do. I wouldn't have anything to do. I wouldn't have anything to talk about. I wouldn't have anything to argue about. And my tongue would just simply cease. If there was no predation going on around us, we would be like any other animal, free roaming this, <laughs> roaming this planet in all of our glory, no one to tell us that we're naked, wherein they can sell us what clothes they think we should wear, or what appearance we should, we should take up, characters we should play. Now the FBI did something very, very dirty this week. Pretended to be ISIS, the FBI beheaded a journalist, threatening the journalists on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri, with a very, very subtle, yet loud directive to shut up, or there'll be more bloodshed. And this isn't a light taking. I mean, this is not something that uh, anyone should take lightly at all. Because, you know, if the FBI is killing us in all variants and pretending to be something else, on the other end of that, it can say, well, we'll, we'll investigate. We got your back. We got your back. And you know what? We just found out that this was a brownie who did this, and he was Muslim. You don't know him, but his culture is really disgusting, and it's not like yours, and he has a different religion, and, you know, you should hate him. It wasn't the FBI or anything. It wasn't the same attorneys feeding people to lions in the arena before, and it wasn't these same priests raping your children in Greece and Rome. It wasn't these same attorneys putting on Salem witch trials by which to burn human beings after pointing the finger at them and calling them crazy when they realize there's something not quite right here in Rome, Massachusetts, Salem, Portland, wherever the conflict is occurring that a, the attorney has put on.
you know, I did spend just a, a, a profound journey years ago, and I, I've spoken about them before, but Erica and Jeffrey Henderson, years ago, they loved to have children, so they were populating their house and, and enjoying their lives together in natural biology. Lo and behold, they got involved with the church, got involved with the rabbi, Next thing you know, there's anonymous callers calling into CPS. And Jeffrey and Erica see a very good deal. Some federal property in a flood zone that's really cheap. So they jump at it. And ironically, that property floods out. And somebody has to hotline the local authorities because, oh my gosh, there's a flood. Firemen come out and start attempting to drown one of their children, and Jeffrey intervenes and grabs a child, and he's charged with assault and all sorts of stuff. And this hits the media. Jeffrey and Erica are vilified and crucified because the sheep will buy it. That wasn't a plea planned event or anything. You know how it goes. And Jeffrey had videotaped a local law enforcement throwing flares into abandoned homes and dry fields of grass just prior to the wildfires in California that year. And he called the FBI, called in the FBI to help him because, you know, they're separate from the local FBI agent that was lighting fields on fire and lighting abandoned homes on fires to spark the wildfires in California that year. And lo and behold, more anonymous phone calls to CPS and arrests and arrest warrants. And these videos are on my Facebook page. Jeffrey and Erica are still fighting the system because they're also with that priest that's telling them, oh, you must have done something wrong here. God has it out for you. What did you do in your past life? All of their children have been taken into the system, and they get to buy the rights to them through a legal process, family probate court. It goes on and on and on and on as they and their children are crucified by pilot, Federal Emergency Management Act, which do not fix roads or fallen trees. They are means of institutionalizing human beings. States of emergencies refer to human beings, and this is the way that funding was being garnered from the Treasury. We are protecting them. Yes, they're all insane. That's the Lord's, they're all insane. Every one of them. Criminal. Look at this criminal rate. Look at this criminal rate. We need more money out of the Treasury because these people are all insane. This penal colony, it never got better. We promised years ago they would, would get better, but it never got better. Never got better. Horrible, horrible things going on. These citizens killing each other. No, wait a second. Citizen didn't kill Michael Brown. Citizens don't kill people very often at all. Each and every day. United States Incorporated each and every year. On average, about 250,000 human beings accidentally die in hospital settings due to mishaps. That's a city the size of Spokane, Washington. Gone. Off the map. Through these gas chambers called hospitals that look so pretty. It 
look great, great. I got insurance. I got lots of insurance. This doctor here says, you know, he'll, he'll fix me up. And that's one of the accidental deaths. That is not the deaths that are diagnosed as cancer without ever having any pathology whatsoever of cancer. Sonia Marie was a victim of that last year. We went through that. It's all on the audios. Sonia Marie of the House of Walsh. Bo's mom. Diagnosed with cancer and then convinced of the, uh, the symptoms. She went through chemotherapy and lo and behold the chemotherapy burned lesions into her frontal lobe and then she was diagnosed with brain cancer. Finally, she was slaughtered with radiation. Chemical warfare. And again, this is all without a pathology of cancer of any kind. Swiftly. Less than a year from start to finish. Her body was used to discharge congressional bankruptcy. And she was a victim of genocide. Within one month, they did the same thing to Joseph Reynolds. And within three months of that trauma, his daughter, Bonnie, was diagnosed with cancer without having a pathology. Diagnosis terminal, and she gave up in June. Finally lost Bonnie in June. Joseph Reynolds' daughter, back to back. Back to back. That's a hundred percent ratio of genocide. They never missed a beat. Never missed a beat. Six, six stuff, FBI's dabbling in. Over in Israel, that uh, organ harvesting schematic. NewYorkTimes.com transplant bro brokers in Israel lure desperate kidney patients to Costa Rica. Lure. Vermont Ghan Israel, aside from the six figure price tag, what was striking was just how easy it was for Ophira Doran to buy a kidney. Two years ago, as she faced the dispiriting prospect of spending years on dialysis, Ms. Doran set out to find an organ broker who could help her bypass Israel's lengthy transplant wait list. Only 36, she had, pro she had a promising job at a software company and dreams of building a family. To a woman who raced cars for kicks, it seemed unthinkable that her best days might be tethered to a soul-sappy machine. For five years, Miss Dorian had managed her kidney disease by controlling her diet, but it had gradually overrun her resistance. Unable to find a matching donor among family and friends, she faced a daily battle against nausea, exhaustion, and depression. A broker who trades in human organs might seem a difficult thing to find, but Miss Doran's mother began making inquiries around the hospital where she worked. And in short order, the family came up with three names. A big odd Sandler, a former insurance agent long suspecting of tra long suspected of trafficking, Boris Wolfman, a young Ukrainian emigre, and Sandler Protege, and Yakov Dayan, a wily businessman with interests in real estate and marketing. Let's let's get to the bottom line here, folks. Through the hospital where she worked, she found an insurance agent and a businessman with interests in real estate and marketing, by which to procure a human kidney. The men were, the New York Times learned during an investigation of the global organ trade, 
among the central operators in Israel's irre irrepressible underground kidney market. Now, Israel is a corporation located in the District of Columbia. For years, they have pocketed at a more enormous sums for arranging overseas transplants for patients who are paired with foreign donors, court filings, and government documents show. The brokers maintain they operate legally and do not directly help clients buy organs. Dodging international condemnation and tightening enforcement, they have nimbly shifted operations across the globe when any one destination closes its doors. The supply of transplantable organs is estimated by the World Health Organization to meet no more than a tenth of the need. Although there is no reliable data, experts say thousands of patients most likely receive illicit transplants abroad each year. Almost always the sellers are poor and ill-informed about the medical risks. So well, yeah, when Congress takes them out of, a, of what appears to be a third world country and uh, harvests them, Who's to stop them? Who's to stop the FBI? I'm still waiting on charges in the Kendrick Johnson death in Georgia at the hands of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation who murdered a child in a public school harvested his organs and then put up a big show about possible uh, boogeyman in the neighborhood. The FBI even was consciously evidenced to have then stuffed Kendrick Johnson's body with newspaper to make it appear as if he had organs still after they performed what they called was an autopsy. But it was just a business deal. The vast marketplace includes the United States, where federal prosecutors in New Jersey won the first conviction for illegal brokering in 2011. Cashing in on both sides. How's that for cornering a market? I'll do it, I'll blame you, and I'll cash in several times. Not only will I cash in with the medical industry itself, I'll cash in with the criminal industry. And, as an added bonus, I'll cash in with the psychological industry as well. Because, you know, victims on the ground are worth a lot of money to psychiatry. After the FBI harvests a child of its organs in a Georgia public school leaving a devastated family a devastated community to then deal with what just occurred wondering if any child is safe which of course usually forces fall back onto the state within cognitive dissonance. I don't think that's possible here, folks. The GBI harvested Kendrick Johnson and then stuffed him full of newspaper. That's how much the GBI, the FBI, thinks of you human beings. Sick. You're just another vessel to be stuffed with newspaper or a constitution. They stuff you full of that every day. Sick. Sick, terrible, terrible things. Sick, horrible not satanic they are satan that is your adversary one who plots against you is known as satan the etymology they're not satanic 
they are Satan. They're worshipping a demigod called Marduk, which is the god of Baal, of Baalism, and piracy. I think I've got Bo on the line. Are you there, Bo? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm... Um, caught me by surprise there. Sorry about that. I saw you come on, and I wasn't sure if that was you or if it was just my Skype. Cause Skype's been bugging me a lot today, too. Yeah. What's up? Uh, well, let's see. I don't know. Uh, it seems like you about covering it all here. Um, now, there's a few stories of interest um, over at the Daily Mail. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, it's just it, the FBI is making me sick. I mean, here's uh, Perry. He's screaming out about ISIS and the FBI and all of these things, and he's pointing the finger elsewhere while he's under indictment, and everybody's you know, rolling over on uh, Obama. Obama looks like the, the uh, prime fall guy here, which is very, very sad to see. Um, you know, he, he put a lot of work into presenting the, the illusion that Congress is a good guy being their uh, mouthpiece, you know, and, and to see him just being turned on and rendered is, is just sad. Very sad. Yeah, well, maybe that's why he just wants to play golf now. I don't know. And that, that's he came back to the White House for 24 hours, raising the question uh, this week, uh, why did he come back at all? Right. Why not just move? Yeah, somebody had a good idea. Why not just move the White House out to the vineyards, and then he wouldn't have to use all that, uh, you know, money and fuel. Right. At the taxpayers' expense. I think that's the most ironic, is that, uh, you know, he's got all these free paid vacations, and... No, he's not sweating this thing in Ferguson at all. He's not worried about it. They facilitated business as usual. Did a great job. Uh, you know, he brought in Holder. Holder didn't do anything either, but, you know, taxpayers paid for that. And, uh, sometimes I, I'm left speechless to witness these things. And the level of consent that sheep will have uh, presented throughout these horrifying things. And it, it's, it's hard to witness, very hard to witness the, uh, the complicity or the compliance and the cooperation that's being uh, maintained as they witness their children being slaughtered in front of their own eyes. Well, as maybe an attempt to show that they're raising the bar, uh, you're the vilest bee um, asterisked out I've met. Judge lets rip with his contempt for a woman sentenced to 30 years for sexually abusing her children with boyfriend. Oh, God, that's horrifying. Where was that at? Amanda Arlano, 29, pleaded guilty to rape and aggravated child molestation on Thursday in a Georgia court among the horrific abuse she committed with 30-year-old boyfriend Daniel Kelly Copeland. The mother admitted to holding one of the girls down so her partner could have sex with the child. She whispered, apologized, uh, she whispered apologies in, to the court on Thursday to which Judge Howard Sims left reportedly responded, Miss Arlano, I don't know what I have ever said I don't know I don't know that I've ever said a curse word from this bench but you may be the vilest bee that I've ever met nice to see that must be a new judge because uh, Georgia has always been a hub for child sex trafficking as well and maybe they brought in a new judge to uh, sit over such cases because um, that's something that I never expected to see in Georgia because it's so foul. They killed Nancy in Georgia and as well as uh, George Nikon trying to shut everybody out because it's a child sex trafficking hub, centralized hub, kind of like Texas. Uh, the psychiatrists congregate there in groups 
and uh, look for ways on how to get away with trafficking children. It's nice to see somebody being held accountable for that, especially one of these mothers that sell their children to these psychiatrists. However, um, we all know that it's more than likely that was a ring, and I'd like to see more people charged for those things and held accountable for the sex trafficking of children. Right. Well, the bar is absolutely on fire, and you're, you're going to see tons of stories now with them coming out trying to save face and uh, be the good guy. I think that's just one of them there, that's all. I'll see. That's been the uh, bottom line of the public law line is protecting the children. Getting them out of the clasp of these horrifying sex trafficking rings maintained by Congress, the FBI, and their cronies. It's constant. It's just productivity. Business as usual. And um, yeah, it, it just to, yeah, just to give you an idea, here's another one. Married teacher of the year. Arrested after having sex with 17-year-old student after wife found sex between the pair on his phone. Aaron Nodal, a teacher at West Fargo High School, has was charged on Friday. He was teacher of the year. Yeah. Well, remember years ago, um, what's her name? I think it was when uh, Bill Clinton was in office and Hillary Clinton got up there to talk about that. Kathy Bush from Florida. She gave her Mother of the Year award, and then later it was found that she was histrionic and Munchausen by proxy, and making that child sick in order to be the hero. They used to promote those things, though. Well, just remember that with any title. Uh, Nobel Peace Prize winners, uh, Cap of the Year, etc. Yeah. They don't have an Attorney of the Year, I, I don't think, do they? I've never seen one, but they, I'm sure that they have them. That's that's like a requirement of being an egotistical attorney. It's always narcissists. It's interesting because, um, you know, all this time and, and even after the genocide order and after the evidence that the genocide order was in play and everything, all of these agents, they didn't say anything much. And they were around us and they were trying to promote other things and sell us concepts and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, after recently, we already sued Congress and won. What's yeah. the deal here? But it was recently that they started, you know, really coming around like their asses are on fire. And it, it was, it's been interesting to see the, um, well, the, the level of excitement now that we've, we're observing with these uh, FBI agents. And, and uh, according to the chatter, it looks like they're, they're in fear. And it's quite quite profound to see because you know all this time they were told by their handlers that they had immunity and they would never get caught for these things and they kept plying them with money and, and uh, benefits on the side and side projects and kids to have their way with and females to have their way with and stuff and and um, it's interesting now the agents are you know, it's like they've been thrown into the fire pit because they're, they're just coming at us left and right whining. It's interesting. Now, earlier in the chat room, um, I shared your information on uh, ISIS being located in Washington, D.C. and Hamas being located in Washington, D.C. and gave the addresses out and everything. And Mark Stevens comes in there and said, asks me if I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> Are you, are I said sarcastic, you know, question mark. Uh, let's see. Uh, right Dun and uh, Bradstreet, uh, hello. Uh, you know, I said, I'm just I'm just telling you the way it is. No pun intended, you know. It's funny. With ISIS. And, um, yeah, so then, yeah, like, uh, and I, then I uh, told him about Rick Perry being traded as... General Counsel and Department of Health and Human Services, and it went silent, of course. Absolutely, the No State Project. He's he's uh, he's something else. Well, 
You know what they say about those that don't have a government, Mr. Stevens. Oh, they get picked up as prisoners of war. Various mechanisms. I'm trying to share that information too. Nope, can't hear it. No. Nope. Hear, hear no, uh, hear no truth, see no truth. Absolutely, they got their benefits, they got their silver, and they're, they're, they're off. They're running away with it. You know, the, the funniest part is that Jesus already said, many, many, many moons ago, of course, it's kind of hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's about as easy to do that as it is to stuff a camel through the eye of a needle. I wonder how much silver Mark Stevens can stuff through at the eye of a needle. It's interesting. These things are interesting. Of course we've got an agent calling. I've got to answer the phone. You'll be able to hear it over no borders, though. Oh, yeah, I, I can't answer your call, Mr. Agent. And your phone number is obviously uh, one that I have blocked before. And uh, it's quite interesting. Interesting. Yeah, every time I attempt to take phone calls, it just turns into a big time-wasting scenario. So. No! And that was like a natural occurrence last time. I'm just calling in to talk to the show host. Well, what show are you calling? I don't know. Just a host on this number. I'm supposed to call this number, and I need to talk to the station owner. And you know, we we need to get some stuff uh, worked out here, Bo. And, and I'm gonna spend another five minutes on here arguing with you about how this number must be broken because I called it. So it's a really good idea. It only costs $33 billion each time you alter his heading. It's a great, great, great week's wage. The IndieChannel.com Brownsburg Town Council member faces probe. Aw, oh, he looks like a baby. Brownsburg, Indiana, Brownsburg Town Councilman Robert Kendall is facing scrutiny for holding multiple paid offices which some argue is a violation of Indiana's dual office holding law, Call 6 investigator Kerry Kenny reported. Kendall has four jobs, including elected and appointed public offices. The Republican serves on the Brownsville Town Council an elected position from January 2012 to December 2015 as a sal at a salary of 13,703 FRNs. He's also a member of the Brownsville Redevelopment Commission and the Hendricks County Solid Waste Management District Board, both appointed positions. Documents provided by the Town of Brownsburg show Redevelopment Commission members and Town Council members appointed to the Waste Management Board earn $100 per meeting. Kendall also makes $45,500 as the director for the Indiana Board of Pharmacy which is neither an elected or appointed position, according to Ashley Hungate, a spokesman for the Indiana State Personnel Department. The dual office prohibition was adopted by the framers of the Indiana Constitution to prevent consolidated power among a small number of government officials and to hide assets. Let's talk about asset hiding and what is known as, quote, divesting or divestment. This is quite profound. They just create these boards and these positions by which to funnel money through the treasury into wherever it needs to go. And of course, this young guy is now sadly looking to be uh, what is known as a fall guy. He just looks like he's only... He doesn't look like he's old for 30. Oh, yeah. He's a nice, fresh, young, juicy surety. Yeah, tasty. Kim Jong-un uh, likes productive citizens. And, uh, you betcha. Redevelopment, you're perfect. You a lot are of construction perfect. going on over there in North Korea and Pyongyang, yeah, as we found out earlier this week. Absolutely. absolutely. Redevelopment, we need those, those developers. Realtors, too. We need realtors. Real estate brokers, attorneys, bankers, 
Anything you got? We got Build North Korea. I really like how that's coming along. What do you got on your board? Oh, missiles rain down on Gaza Strip, killing five as the bloody conflict between Hamas and Israel reaches its 47th agonizing day. Another um, display here, again, of the longest-running Job experiment ever, largest on the planet, I think, because, uh, you know, they just keep crucifying all these uh, Palestinians, and, 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 you know, the world is just set by... Um, Idly, for the most part, for since 1948. Right. And, and the um, FBI is, is on the ground. The FBI is on one side called Israel, and the FBI is on the other side called Gaza or Palestine. And they're killing citizens and then telling citizens that they're killing each other. And this is a civil war when it's never been a civil war. It was just presented as a presentation through the CIA. You can read about that in the book four. Uh, Church Committee reports before supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence. Page 12 uh, goes into uh, how the CIA is a production company, and when they start as a production, uh, it looks like a war. It's presented as a war through the media. Intelligence uh, is produced by such as Diane Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, Harry Reid. And uh, in this manner, it's promoted through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, which has control over all civil media internationally. And bottom line, it's Ferguson, Missouri. FBI kills an 18-year-old, points the finger all around at everybody else, blames Hamas, blames Gaza, blames ISIS, blames Islam, blames Christian, blames Jews, when it's always, blames always, Israel. always, 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 always been the same Congress, the same congressional military called FBI. Unfortunately, the, the hatred and uh, racial disparity that they've created and festered, maintained over there is quite real to all the citizens that are seeing all this uh, play out and buying into it. Absolutely. They attempted it here in Ferguson, and the world was able to see an FBI agent kill an 18-year-old, and then the resultant hullabaloo that happened. They get 40 more FBI agents in there. The National Guard was put in there. They tried to point the finger elsewhere and did a very, very, very poor job of it. And in the end, what happened? The FBI killed an 18-year-old child, attempted to promote the concept of racism, Throughout that time, Congress members and judges and, and uh, legislators here and there were promoting uh, transphobia, uh, homophobia, uh, black, white, purple, brown relations, all of these things and all of these presentations when bottom line it's Congress and it is their minions that are racist, their minions that are killing human beings across the globe without much discretion other than market conditions. Yeah, there was a story I saw earlier where uh, donations for this cop that killed Brown were up to like, I don't know, 300 some 20, 300 some thousand dollars uh, they've gotten for his cause. Now, now, who do you suppose is donating to that cause? Attorneys? Absolutely, and it said that yesterday. It was other FBI agents promoting racial tension, racial disparity, uh, racism. They were saying some of the foulest things. But again, uh, from their own mouths, uh, the FBI are these extremists. And when you go back to the inception... Uh, yeah, well, um, here, here, just a moment on that there. You know, this headline here, Chilling ISIS taught... So on U.S. soil, FBI warns police to be on alert for attacks. America's militants post sinister tweets warning Chicago is a target. Now, there's the FBI threatening you. Yes. Because it's the FBI pointing the finger at ISIS, which is the FBI being produced by the CIA. Absolutely. And so there's a threat from the FBI, a terrorist threat from the FBI to you out there in Chicago. Absolutely. 
and there's more information on this yesterday um, when it was reported um, get to it here you're right gonna today. buy into our terrorist threats or we're gonna have to attack one of your towns again it's gonna be worse than 9-11 they're saying yeah didn't Cheney do the same thing a while back and and it was uh, somebody else who was threatening a, a civil war here now the tweet that came out according to reports um, let me open that because it's very interesting uh, when this originally reported, it was reported on the Washington Times.com. The tweet was, quote, We are in your streets. Chicago gets chilling Islamic State terror tweet. And from this report, sorry, I'm froze up. That was the one that was traced back to... Uh... The location of the tweet was 307 North Michigan Avenue at the city's old Republic building. Mm-hmm. The tweet came from government. Well, there you go. I mean, I could have guessed that, but they're telling you now in the mainstream media what's going on. Well, they have to report the truth. I mean, that's what they were there for originally. And being uh, once the media learned they were being fed intelligence, well, of course they repented. Even uh, those are the rules. You know, Mike K. Electric uh, on YouTube is very patriotic and reports a lot of this uh, uh, alternative media. He was even shocked to see the mainstream media coming out and reporting the truth. Absolutely. He didn't know what to think about it. He doesn't know what's going on because he doesn't watch our videos. Right, but it's beautiful to see because, you know, we all started out originally being patriots and, and you know, loving this thing and thinking of this thing that has... Uh, this thing is actually there to, to help us. And the media was under the same impression, especially when you have uh, John Forbes Carey, the, the clearing house, clearing bankruptcy, or clearing the books uh, on behalf of Congress. And he's sitting on the Board of Governors, the Broadcasting Board of Governors, feeding the me media what to say and do and, and everything else. And it was just so sick. You know, we didn't cover a lot of this this week. Uh, Ebola deaths and all of that is just it's horrifying um, two Ebola victims are uh, were released this week uh, a couple more tested negative for Ebola but now they've got the Congo also under quarantine measures and um, our hearts are there also this week study finds one in three Americans have been implanted with RFID chips most are unaware. One in three with dental work. The study involved cavity filling, fillings and the like through the use of dentistry by which to implant chips for marketing purposes. Or and as you walk through the scanner at the checkout line at a grocery store or department store, this collects your information and later you can be advertised to direct to your home or via the internet if you are online. It is the most efficient snake in the garden concept yet to track your spending behavior, like tracking other animals on the quite on the farm, it is quite ingenious. It has a max 20 foot radial capacity, but the majority seems to simply be at the scanner itself that matches with your dental work and other implants like hips or knees. You would probably notice if the Stasi agents wrestled you to the ground, clipped a portion of your ear off, and injected you with an implant, wherein they sell it to everyone through the medical industry, as that is way less offensive. You can find more information on this by going to TammyPepperman.org. Study finds one in three Americans have been implanted with RFID chips. Most are unaware. Uh, I also put the actual studies there uh, from EPIC. EPIC, radio frequency identification systems, uh, tracking people's movements by RFID implants. Uh, you'll find that in Digital Commons as well as RFID computer science. And uh, these are interesting studies because uh, you've already been chipped, for those of you waiting for it. Yeah, right. It's, it's, like, it's like I keep saying, the New, World's not, New World Order's not common. It's been here since 1941, Atlantic Charter. Uh, speaking of uh, Ebola, a quick one here. A Briton living in Sierra Leone tests positive for Ebola and is being assessed by doctors. 
we'll be back next week. Don't miss the Bone Rocker Show next Wednesday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A. Love you, everybody. Be well.